So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Thomas Meyer, and uh, I'm the tech lead uh, at the preview team uh, here at the Federal Foreign Office. And uh, I hope you can uh, all see my uh, my my screen, um, which is uh, just a, a short introduction, because uh, today uh, we want to present our new uh, climate uh, conflict application. Um, which we um, yeah announced or first announced in in May during the preview conference also here in Berlin and um, um, a short uh, uh, yeah a brief look into the future. So what is planned? The project will continue to investigate the relationship between climate and conflict, uh, also in more detail in a multidisciplinary research project as well as further communication outputs and dialogue uh, formats. Um, so um, this um, project, um, the, the research project, will be uh, with the Potsdam Institute for Climate uh, Impact Research and um, the Competence Center uh, for Crisis Early Warning at the Federal Armed Forces uh, University in Munich. And uh, yeah, we are working very close together. Um, so now I want to share my screen. I hope you can see right now uh, our new dashboard, uh, which we officially uh, released under this domain, climate-conflict.org. And um, I'll yeah, take you through a quick jump uh, over the page. Um, so um, uh, the website uh, targeted at a wide range uh, of audiences. Uh, the site uses maps, interactive graf graphics, and animations to shed light uh, uh, on this complex uh, topic, uh, which is concerned climate, uh, the, the relationship between climate and conflict um, uh, um, uh, to each other. Um, the application is made as a one page spawning website, uh, which has the advantage of providing high levels uh, of interactivity. It is more engaging for users to scroll through your site website rather than uh, use a typical navigation menu. And uh, I think uh, we'll jump right in and uh, go to the um, to the next uh, slide uh, over here, which uh, focuses our um, conceptual framework uh, um, for which is uh, following uh, over the, the the whole the whole site, um, which and which shows you uh, uh, three layers. Uh, one layer is, is is climate impact. Another layer is uh, socioeconomic scope conditions, uh, and the third layer uh, uh, is, is the conflict situation. And um, uh, all those uh, um, all, all all those layers can be can be also view viewed uh, together or merged together, uh, where you can see clear hotspots. And uh, those hotspots, actually, which are shown here, uh, are derived from the uh, climatediplomacy.org uh, project, um, which is uh, also in collaboration with Adelphi. And uh, those um, uh, hotspots over here uh, are taken uh, from, from this and aggregated uh, via the data we derived from Adelphi. So, um, you can have a look at, uh, yeah, actually the global scope, at uh, the hotspots, and uh, also a hotspot list. And um, just to mention it, um, those crit scores, um, yeah, were derived mainly from uh, publicly available data and uh, processed by the um, Competence Center for Crisis Early Warning. And um, uh, the hotspots, uh, uh, the, the hotspot um, um, scores uh, were derived uh, in collaboration uh, with the company uh, um, Varys Maplecroft, um, which uh, whom we work together to derive those scores. So, and uh, everything is also explained uh, here on the web page as well. And uh, this is uh, uh, the, the conceptual framework, uh, which I just introduced. Uh, all um, climate-related uh, topics are shown in yellow. Um, socioeconomic scope conditions are shown in blue. And uh, conflict, the conflict situation, which is mainly based uh, upon the ACLET uh, data, the armed conflict location event data set, uh, is shown in, in red over here. But um, um, those layers can be uh, interchangeable. It's a it's a framework, 
So you could uh, also for for further project, uh, we could also take, uh, um, for example, migration as well uh, as as the red layer over here. And uh, now uh, uh, we focused on a case study, uh, which is uh, focuses the farmer herder conflict uh, in cent central uh, Nigeria. And uh, you can, uh, yeah, over here you have um, uh, the, the, the hotspot uh, scores for climate scope conditions and conflict. And uh, now we can uh, have a short tour in the short introduction uh, into the conflict situation. And uh, the white dots over here you see are uh, the actual events uh, at the time, uh, uh, the momentary conflicts. And um, the red dots become larger over time uh, because uh, those are the accumulated uh, uh, conflicts over time. And uh, so, so now you see uh, we are focusing on the central Nigeria um, area and the farmer herder conflict. Um, over here, you can see uh, the agricultural uh, dependency um, of, of Nigeria uh, or the whole uh, Sahel region and also uh, see uh, what the trends is over, over the last years. Uh, here you can see the competing uh, land uses. So uh, you have um, grassland uh, here um, uh, dislocated in the north, in the northern parts, and uh, cropland in the in the southern parts. And uh, now I think uh, Stefano wants to hand over and uh, uh, tell you something about the drought situation. <clears throat> Stefano. Thank you, Thomas. So, so far you have seen that we have made uh, quite extensive use of, of satellite data, the land cover, and also data you will see very soon are, are gathered from satellite. We consider, I consider satellite data uh, quite objective data set it compares to others such as surveys, news or so, because with satellite, we get what, what we see from the sky and that's it, it's, it's very simple and highly, highly communicative. For what regards this line of the drought, uh, we, have used, we have used meteorological data. We know that rising in, in temperature causes water to evaporate faster, and this leads to increasingly drier soil. So here we have mapped the SPEI, which is Standard Precipitation Evaporation Index, to measure the water balance based on the rainfall and evapotranspiration. If you look in the charts, we see that in the charts, why there is a year-to-year -year quite big fluctuation, the loss of water trend through evaporation and transpiration clearly outweigh the gain of water through precipitation of the, over the last two decades. And this clearly demonstrates the desertification effects that is uh, affecting Nigeria. Then after this scenario, we can also see uh, if you please go to the next, so uh, we can also look into another index and this index has been derived again from the satellite. Uh, the name of this index is, uh, is NDVI. So the NDVI has been of the most widely uh, used vegetation index since its introduction in the 70s. So it's, it's many years that the NDVI has been used. And today more and more people use the NDVI in agriculture, right? But what is this uh, NDVI more concretely? The NDVI terms means normalized difference vegetation index. And it's a very simple indicator of the photosynthetical active biomass, or in simple terms, an estimation of vegetation curve, which is much easier to understand. So how it works? It works by mathematically comparing the amount of visible red light absorbed and the infrared light reflected. So why do we look into absorb of red and reflect and the reflection of infrared? This happens because the pigment in, in a healthy plant absorb mostly the visible red light that is used for the chlorophyll photosynthesis, as you might remember from, from the school. Instead, the plant cellular cellular structure reflect most of the infrared light that is not useful and only produce heating the plant. So this means that when you have high photosynthetic activity, 
This common, commonly is associated to uh, dense, healthy vegetation. And so this means that, uh, that this is gonna as less reflectance in the red band and high reflectance in the near infrared band. So by looking at these two values, okay, we can detect and analyze vegetation. Now, again, as we have seen before about desertification, we can also look at look the same phenomena from the plant. And as you can see from the charts, in the last two decades, we have gotten increasingly worse in the majority of the grassland and also on the, in the croplands. So then later, all right, <laughs> we, we have also focused on, um, on another phenomena which we have named to anthropic pressure. And we do so again using satellite by, uh, by mapping the human settlements on the ground. So uh, again, also this has been derived from satellite. Here the satellite, here with the satellite, we do not count the people, right? Because it's, it's impossible, it's very difficult. But we, but we can monitor quite well the settlement expansion. And later, this is also used to refine the population grid. Now, while the state of the ecosystem and the soil, as we have seen also earlier, are increasingly put under pressure, it has also, the soil has also to produce food for a growing population. Now we know that in the, over the last two decades, the population of Nigeria has grown by almost the 70% by moving into more in the, in, uh, industrialized farming, farming practices and expanding croplands. So, but Nigeria managed to increase this, uh, to manage this transition out to very recently. However, the growth in ag agricultural production, uh, it, it's not able to keep with the, with the population growth. So population growth, it's an important phenomenon to keep under control and, uh, and monitor. And also we see that looking into the unnutrition un un share, uh, in the last two decades, we have a growth of the three of the three percent since uh, the two thousand, and all those uh, were possible through looking at the looking at the anthropic pressure on on the ground and matching the, this information with other analytical information. Now, if you continue scrolling the website, you will see that more and more analysis has been has been projected. Uh, we have. Uh, state of fragility, and as well, uh, we have uh, evaluation for uh, the government effectiveness and, and other information through which we map performance of Nigeria uh, in the last two, two decades. Um, this format of growing uh, the, the website or analyzing the website allows you to follow the story as Thomas has said earlier, very easily by just scrolling your mouse and the information are gonna be presented through, through maps and through, and through text. I don't know, Thomas, if you want to let the, the viewer explore themselves the, the rest of the website, uh, or you want to mention something more specifically in the, in the change in the land use uh, or the future, or as you prefer. Let me have a quick. Uh, so, uh, um, just uh, one uh, note on the on the left side, you can see. So we have this visual framework, uh, which means uh, all the red dots uh, here are uh, um, are related to to, to conflict. Uh, uh, the blue dots uh, are related to socio economic uh, scope conditions, and the uh, yellow dots uh, are related uh, uh, to climate uh, change. And uh, as Stefano already mentioned, uh, you can uh, visually explore the whole situation. And uh, just to uh, have a quick uh, recap over the fight over land, you see the red dots, uh, which are all events related to the Parma herder conflict uh, with an involvement of the Fulani militia. And uh, those uh, white uh, dots are uh, other conflict events uh, recorded in ACLED. So uh, as we can see, or in, in conclusion, we can see that the farmer herder conflict is, is one main conflict in the, uh, in the whole region, but not the only one. Uh, not the only one. And we uh, can focus on uh, many more uh, conflicts as well. And uh, what's next? Uh, we are working on, uh, on new uh, um, use cases, on new stories 
for example, uh, of the Horn of Africa, and uh, we are working on that. And uh, we will, yeah, the, the site is uh, under, uh, yeah, under under current development, and uh, we will uh, also release this. And um, we will also um, provide the code for the uh, for the whole website uh, in a, yeah, I think uh, in the in the near future um uh via via github and um uh, if you have questions to the technical notes uh you can also jump uh, uh to a um, google document uh, which you can find here where we provide all information how uh, we we came up uh, with those grid layer scores and uh, what are the technical details of it and uh, so um this is the end of our presentation I hope you enjoyed it and I'm open or we are open for your questions. I see two questions, Thomas. Okay, which one? Let's start from the first from, from Jill, which asked how might these data help finding new shredded benefit or linkages with the water food energy ecosystem nexus? So uh Actually, right now uh, we are we are uh, focusing on, on on climate change and not uh, uh, so much on uh, water, food, energy uh, ecosystem or the this nexus. But actually, uh, we can um, we have a flexible uh, we have a flexible um, um, conceptual framework, and we can also extend that uh, to uh, to this nexus as well. And um, uh, we are open for that. And uh, but uh, right now we uh, started up uh, by focusing on uh, yeah a, a more climate uh, related topic. Another question from Thomas: Where these the data sets used come from? Um, it's all mentioned in the uh, in the in the technical notes. Uh, all used data sets uh, are um, uh, are also mentioned, and um, uh, the, the grid scores uh, were um, derived and calculated uh, by the competence center, as I already mentioned. And uh, it's all mentioned in the in the tech notes. And if you have any further questions, you uh, don't hesitate uh, to ask us uh, maybe over email. Another, another question from Thomas, uh, he says, there are a lot of analysis initi initiatives emerging right now. This seems comprehensive and very accessible. So he says, well done, thank you. And, but the, the point is, what are you doing to avoid duplication with others? So actually, uh, this is a, a, a great uh, a great question. Uh, uh, so um, actually, yeah, we try uh, to avoid uh, uh, duplication, but there I know there are uh, a lot of uh, uh, um, um, yeah a, whole, a lot of a lot of uh, websites focusing uh, also on uh, climate change and also on the uh, on the uh, Palmer Herder conflict, but uh, it will not be our last uh, uh, use case. Which we present over here, and uh, uh, we will uh, do that also uh, in close relationship uh, uh, to other projects. Uh, uh, yeah, for international organizations, we are working uh, close look closely together. For example, uh, with UNEP Strata, and uh, uh, yeah, we try to avoid. But uh, actually, for the Hammer Farmer Herder conflict, I'm very sorry about that. Uh, but uh, it's a yeah, it's it's one of the uh, yeah one of the most researched uh, uh, conflicts in this uh, in this ecosystem or in the climate conflict nexus. We have other one, two, three, four questions. Eh? <laughs> Alexandre, uh, how is the German Ministry of Foreign Affairs using it, and can this tool be used for predicting conflicts? Um, actually, uh, right now, uh, uh, also a great question. Uh, no, uh, right now it's it's not it's not a, a tool which we uh, want to focus or which uh, is is um, um, especially focusing on prediction. Even even though uh, preview has a clear focus on prediction, um, but um, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of our presentation, uh, we are already working. Uh, uh, on an on an additional project, uh, um, especially um, to uh, recalculate uh, uh, all the three layers: the, the, the climate layer, the socio-economic uh, uh, layer, and also the conflict layer. 
And uh, uh, this project, this research project, uh, which will be in, in collaboration with the Potsdam Institute for Climate Conflict, uh, uh, for Climate Impact Research, and also for, for, uh, with the Competence Center, uh, will clearly have a predictive focus. So we are working on that, but uh, at this time, um, there's uh, no prediction function uh, uh, included in the, in the website. Questions are increasing there, yeah, Thomas. <laughs> we need to go fast. So there is an anon anonymous who is asking that, uh, who is saying that looks very impressive. Just wondering approximately, uh, approximately how many people and how much time it took to develop and implement the dashboard. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, uh, so actually, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know uh, uh, to one hundred percent. Uh, I think uh, Stefano was more involved uh, in that. Uh, uh, I can, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, no, I have, I, I, I don't know. So how many, how many persons? So uh, actually you are completely right. We um, uh, didn't, uh, we didn't uh, um, develop the dashboard by our own. Uh, so, and we have to thank uh, also uh, to the, to the main, developer, which was uh, Moritz Stefana uh, and, and also Flavio Gatana from Tooth and Beauty, um, the, armed, uh, the, the competence center from the Armed Forces uh, University, uh, also uh, Caldera, who were able to, to uh, host the project. Uh, uh, and we had also scientific uh, advisory from the Potsdam uh, Institute for Climate Impact Research. Uh, and from Adelphi and also from various Maplecroft. And uh, so uh, it, it was a, a lot of time uh, and a lot of experience flowing into this project. And uh, I want to thank uh, everybody who, uh, who helped to, to make it happen. Another question from, from Robin, you, you shortly have mentioned about that earlier, um, is about uh, how will the data be updated over time? Uh, so actually, yeah, great, great, great question. No, right now uh, it's uh, it's a static view, uh, but we are working, and this will also be a, a development step into the future. We are working on a, a stable data connection with uh, um, automatic, yeah, most likely automatically uh, updated data. But right now, uh, uh, it's it's just uh, it's just a timestamp uh, um, from which uh, we can we can show it right now. Another question from Anton about the uh, are, are or will the climate impact on military readiness, ability to respond to threats also be included in the analysis? Oh, will the climate impact? Um, so right now we uh, didn't uh, uh, really focus uh, on that uh, uh, too much, uh, to, to be honest. Uh, but uh, it's a it's a it's a great question for a further project uh, and uh, yes so we are completely open uh, for new perspectives we are completely open for new collaborations and uh, um, we are we are happy uh, um, to tell more stories and um, yeah the future scope will more or less be a climate conflict nexus atlas uh, so. Um, uh, where we have uh, our, our global vision and also our use cases, and we try to develop more use cases and tell the story from a data perspective. Um, and uh, um, not only not only from a, from a narrative uh, as a perspective um, um, shared by the German Federal Ministry, but also uh, a story which can also be underlined uh, uh, with data and uh, uh, have a clear narrative approach. Last question again from Thomas is about uh, providing contacts and sharing email addresses. He's also working uh, in the UK to prepare a number of analyses to better apply biodiversity and climate uh, in fragile settings. And so probably he wants to keep up. Uh, so give me give you. me a second. Maybe I can uh, provide <laughs> my email address in the uh, in the in the chat. Uh, so uh, you can uh, always contact me, but I think uh, also an email address is also provided on the on the web page. But uh, just just a second. So and I would be happy to uh, um, yeah directly uh, come in touch with you and uh, discuss uh, about about challenges uh, or uh, collaboration. That would be great. 
I think for the moment we have answered all the questions. So, and I also think it's uh, two minutes uh, left uh, uh, for the session. Uh, so uh, uh, very, very, very good from a, from the timing perspective. So if there are no further questions, uh, I would to thank you all uh, for joining the meeting. And uh, I will be happy uh, to discuss uh, uh, this issue and the nexus uh, also uh, in another um, yeah in another context. Thank you very much, and uh, see you hopefully soon. <laughs>